Hey guys, what's up? Good evening. So I got a question from a viewer. He says, uh, Chris Hawks, brother, I want to be able to create a web app with server-side scripting for software for Mac and Windows, and I also uh, want it to be for games. What are the two or three languages I should learn first? So um, the first one that comes to mind, and, uh, and really this is the only one I know for this type of situation, uh, that would be C Sharp. I mean, C Sharp for um, Windows, uh, it, it's now cross-platform for both Windows and Mac um, with the new .NET Core. So um, there's really, I think, no other way to go when it comes to games. Now, the reason why games, just because if you're just getting started programming, you don't want to, um, you don't want to get in over your head. I mean, you could, you could probably go with C++, uh, maybe, but let me first try to explain the, the case for uh, C Sharp, and C++ may be my second option there, but Unity um, is a very easy game engine in order to use. So uh, if you have some basic C Sharp experience, then you're going to be able to hit the ground running with Unity relatively well. Now, it's not easy because game development is not easy at all, especially a 3D game engine, uh, which is also capable of 2D and, uh, you know, work. Obviously, that's a 2D game right there. But um, Unity, I think, may, uh, it's just, it's it's a great framework, and it's built for this, the C-sharp language. So I don't want to confuse anybody. The actual back end, the libraries that, that the, the, you know, basically the core engine itself is written in C and C++. Uh, but they've opened it up to basically uh, creating an API that you use C-sharp in order to, uh, to work with the engine. Um, although you can use other languages as well, like JavaScript and Boo. But I think people should just stick with C-sharp because it really it's annoying having the documentation scattered all over the Unity, uh, Unity ecosystem where like some of it's in JavaScript and some of it is in C-sharp. So um, definitely, you know, C-sharp is a, is a solid language to learn. Um, it was, you know, it was it has a lot of you know, the corporate backing of Microsoft, obviously. So uh, a lot of people don't like Microsoft, but uh, the, the language was designed really, really well. It's completely object oriented. Uh, it's statically typed and it's it's compiled. So it's fast. It's going to be faster than Python. It's going to be faster than PHP or Ruby or um, Perl or anything like that. Um, the documentation, I think, is not very, very forgiving for newbies. Um, this is something where I, I originally was getting into a C-sharp tutorial series, and I just realized that you know I was getting some feedback. I was moving too fast. And one of the reasons why I haven't given a tutorial on C-sharp is, number one, I do it you know, day in and day out. And um, you know, I, I just, I'm not sure that I, I want to continue monkeying around with it because I, I use it during the day. So I try to keep things fresh for me. But in, in addition, it's because... It's, it's a relative bitch to get started with compared to some of the other languages. I find Python to be much easier. I find Perl to be easier. And Ruby and JavaScript I even find easier than C Sharp. So um, a lot of stuff is very Microsoft-y, I would say. If that's not, that's not really a word, but basically Microsoft has like uh, almost like a way of explaining things and a terminology and even their ecosystem and, and their, their hacker community is very Microsoft-y compared to like some of the Linux and Python guys that uh, that I've, I've also come to know over the years. So, um, you know, those downsides said, if you can learn C-sharp, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity out there to make a lot of money. A lot of, a lot of companies are, you know, full C-sharp uh, or really .NET is what the, uh, the, the ecosystem is that C-sharp is, is, is really built around. Uh, but a lot of companies are, what are, are considered Microsoft shops or .NET shops. And that just means that you know, they're all about the, the Microsoft set of products. So that means they're using Azure for uh, cloud hosting nowadays. And, and Azure is, you know, giving uh, a lot of companies a run for their money, like even AWS. Amazon's AWS is where a huge majority of, uh, of websites are storing their data, they're, that they're running their websites and things like that. Uh, but Azure is in second place there. And, you know, they continue to grow. And um, their products, uh, you know, I, can, I know firsthand a lot of, you know, huge, humongous billion-dollar companies are using Azure for cloud cloud hosting and storage and everything, um, and then uh, Microsoft also has Xamarin too. So if you do get good enough with C Sharp, then you can eventually uh, get involved with with Xamarin, which um, Microsoft ended up buying. I think people said it was for four hundred million dollars, but Xamarin is uh, what a lot of companies use to make apps. So um, you you ask about you know uh, well really you didn't mention apps did you? No, you didn't mention apps. So, but either, either way, if you ever wanted to get into app development, then Xamarin might be a decent option for you. 
I personally um, have never found a whole lot of enjoyment in app development. I just find it to be a real miserable experience. Um, now, I haven't tried to port anything from Unity um, yet, so I'll see if that changes my mind any. But, um, you know, it, one of the biggest pains for me with, with, uh, with app development is that the, the, being able to test them. Like, the emulators are absolutely ridiculous to, to have to set up. Like, I use Getty Motion, and uh, Getty Motion actually makes the process a lot easier than I would say that, that it's ever been in the past. But uh, being able to test your Android stuff with all the different Android OSs and, and being able to plug in a device that you need to, you know, like uh, through your USB and, and running local apps and things like that, or even setting up an emulator. Like uh, for Xamarin, Microsoft rec recommends this Hyper-V emulator but in order to do that you have to like modify your bios of your system uh, your computer system in order uh, for some of you know some people like i think my pc needs to to have that done in order to um to activate it and i think when i tried to do that for whatever reason it said that my computer wasn't even eligible for this hyper v so things you know even after what almost 10 years it seems like of of uh of, of mobile phone development it's still a major pain in the ass uh, just to get get started, really, and that's that's one of the biggest things. Like, as a program, I just want to be able to get started, and that's why I think Unity is great. Um, now, a lot of people gave me some slack about you know .NET Core and making some you know statements saying that it wasn't ready for prime time. I don't know because I did that video where it says is .NET Core a good option? Well, by all means, go ahead and use it. The day I made the video, though, the next day I talked to a buddy who actually created. A .NET Core. It was an ASP.NET Core um, website. So it was, you know, MVC. Um, in his database, he was using Mongo. So he was able to get a Mongo database set up. Now, uh, as of August, though, uh, there was like a Stack Overflow question that showed that Postgres still didn't have a database driver in place. So there was no way that I could use Postgres without using Entity Framework Seven. Um, and that and, and that goes back to August of this year. I made the video in like November, so really it's not like I'm that far out of touch with it. But uh, .NET Core is something I do want to get involved in in 2017. Um, I think it's relatively just you know it, it's it's new obviously, so things are changing. You know they've had some issues trying to brand the product. They've changed the name a few times, but uh, ultimately .NET Core it runs on Linux, Mac, and you can uh, you know set it up with Docker as well. So this is the this is the first for Microsoft. Another product that they've done really well is uh, Visual Studio Code. This is turning into a goddamn Microsoft uh, advertisement. They're not paying me anything, so I'm going to stop now. Um, anyway, so C Sharp is a good option because Microsoft, there's still, there's, there, if you go that route, that, that, you know, that's a good route to go. Now, you were talking about um, like game engines. So you talk about a fast language that's used in software that, that is used in games. And... Um, you know that I would point to the Unreal Engine because they use C++, and um, you know this is a AAA game engine that has made games like uh, Batman's Arkham Asylum and things like that. I mean, it's 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 you know, top-notch games. It's you know really really large. Uh, you know, you'd, you'd pay millions of dollars to actually build code like this. Um, so C++ is a, is a language that I've never really gotten into too much, but um, that is something that obviously is used in software apps a lot. Um, and then the, the final option I would say would be uh, Java. So like um, I believe Minecraft was created in Java, but I'd have to look that up. But Java is obviously a humongous language. It's really the the alternate option to C sharp. So if you're if you're going to be a .NET shop, you're going to go with C sharp. And if you're going to be uh, more of a Linux like you know Java type shop, then then obviously you're using Java. If you're using Guidewire, Guidewire is very popular in the uh, in the enterprise ecosystem right now and and uh and, and guidewire uses something called uh gosu or gosu which is g-o-s-u uh programming language which runs on the java uh, java virtual machine so it's basically a flavor of java from what i've been told but i don't do a whole lot of that either but uh job is everywhere it's actually there's probably more java jobs than there are c sharp um but you know that is a great option now finally i i would be in a bad spot if I didn't mention one of my favorite languages, which uh, really doesn't do what you want it to do. So uh, I will mention it anyway, though, just for any sort of newbies, because Python is a great language. Python is what I write my websites in. You can make relative, you know, basic games in Python. 
but it's not really it's not it, it's a dynamically interpreted language so it's not compiled um, you, you don't it, you're not really going to make it you're not going to use it to make you know hardcore game engines or, or operating systems for the most part uh, at least not that I know of anyway but if you need something like a systems programmer like uh, run scripts to collect data make basic games like like really really basic games and then Python can do that Python's used in gaming industries for tying servers together and things like that like Eve online I know uses Python so and then another thing too is that there are uh, software teams that are using Python as well so the Python has uh, GUI toolkits like uh, Py, uh, uh, PySide and uh, PyQt I think it was PyQt or maybe it's just QT but um, there, there's a QT port over to, uh, to Python that, that allows you to write a lot of uh, modern software type apps in, in Python. But um, my, my choices would be C Sharp, uh, probably then Java, then C++, then Python when it comes to your specific question. Um, and I'm curious what anybody else has to say about that. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. You have a good day. Take care. Bye. Hey guys, so I've talked about this a lot. Uh, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, they are my sponsor. They're one of the reasons why I'm able to do these videos. And uh, they offer a 12 week intensive course that teaches you the technologies of the here and now. They're going to focus on a lot of things that are actually being used in websites, uh, things like jQuery, and they're going to be using stacks like Node.js. The 12 week intensive course is to try to get people in the job market. So that is their entire focus. We've, all, we've talked a lot about on this channel whether or not a college degree is worth it. I'm not the one to be able to answer that question for you. I absolutely think that college degrees are great, especially in computer science. I never want to convince somebody to say that they shouldn't do that. Um, you know, obviously, schools like Stanford and MIT, I, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in envy of all those uh, graduates. However, there is you know the bulk of developers that don't necessarily need to be the MIT graduates to actually have success in the programming world. I think I speak relatively uh, well for for that type of person. And with coding boot camps, we're seeing them um, you know try to offer more uh, skills, more modern day skills. Because a lot of times when you're going to a computer science course in a major university, you're learning technology that's already outdated by the time you're learning it. With Dev Mountain and coding boot camps like what Dev Mountain offers, they're focusing on really what is hot right now. So, and they also focus on a relatively, um, you know, small set of skills in, in order to make sure that that they are teaching you what you need to know in order to be productive in a in a workplace environment. So, make sure you guys uh, do me a favor, do yourself a favor, check out the link in the in the description tab below for more on Dev Mountain coding boot camp. Thanks, guys. Bye.